So here's the old infamous tomato flower. The very beginnings, I told you about how they pollinate and stuff. And now another thing, most of my crosses originally came from natural bee crosses. And then we started intentionally crossing. So originally there was only green zebra and maybe one or two other striped varieties when I started doing this. My first goal was to rewrite the tomato book with gourmet tomatoes in every shape, size, and color with stripes on them just because they look better, <laughs> they're flashier. So then recently too, the ones with the anthocyanin, this black purple coloring. So this is anthocyanin, same thing, it's in blueberries and blackberries, and it came from a wild tomato from South America. Um, I think Oregon State University was the first to get it, and it was a small, almost like a purple tomatillo, and supposedly it was gross, nobody could you know, eat it, it was really sour. So uh, I had a friend actually that got a hold of that, and he crossed what he said was the worst tomato he'd ever eaten with a couple of the best tomatoes he had ever eaten. He crossed a bunch with my varieties and then sent me the seeds. So that's kind of where it all started. So now I get to, the, the tomato world gets to be rewritten. Well, let's splash purple and black all over tomatoes. So it's kind of interesting. Honestly, tomatoes have changed more in the last 10 years. They have in their entire existence on this planet, and it hasn't been for the worse. You know, we got up to about the 50s. Tomatoes were pretty good. They went downhill for 50 years or, or so. Then heirlooms came back. There's some real good ones or whatever, and now we're getting what I call heirlooms of the future. A lot of people now are taking even their two favorite squash plants, crossing it, see what happens. Their favorite pepper plants, uh, the two tomato plants that love their climate and they love the taste, crossing them, getting a one of a kind, 5% of the time may be uh, a cross. So you could have a tomato that shows up in your garden or a pepper or other things. It might be the only one in the whole world. Some of my varieties were mutations or even a one of a kind cross where I grabbed tomatoes off one plant and that started the whole thing. So a lot of times you have one opportunity, your one golden opportunity to save seeds. So what I do to cross, you would get this flower the day before. Um, if I was cool, I'd have a picture of that one too. It's more of a little trumpet. It's kind of puckered in. This is the day before this, this would actually be receptive. This is the day this is receptive. It's going to pollinate. So the day before, it's not quite opened. I'd remove all the yellow. You emasculate it. You take a little pair of pliers, and you take all the yellow. You're taking the pollen that's going to be going. You're taking the, the petals, all that off. And all you have is a pollen receptor, the stigma style okay and the little green ovary the ovary the little green unpollinated tomato so no bugs going to pollinate this it wasn't pollen receptive today so it's not pollinated yet so then you wait till the next day and i use a glass from sunglasses because it's dark and I actually go to whoever i want the man to be in her life and i start tapping on the flowers and i get a bunch of yellow grain pollen or whatever and then it's just a matter of going over and dabbing you just now cross-pollinated. That pollen goes down the tube. It pollinates this, the little green tomato. I cut all the other flowers off so you're not confused. You tie a ribbon with a tag on who the man in her life was. And now you hope and you wait that the cross took. So the tomato is going to look exactly the same. The only thing that changed would be the DNA and the seeds inside this tomato. So now actually you've ended up with an F1. So just as an example, F1 hybrids like Early Girls Popular, they took a red indestructible beefsteak and crossed it with a super good cherry tomato from what i know i'm not sure they didn't let me in but um so they crossed the two the very first year and all the offspring come out exactly like early girl if you were to save or whatever hybrid now if you were to save seeds from that f1 hybrid that now you're in the f2 you're now gonna have examples of grandparents and uncles and everything else maybe this red beefsteak that you used here had a yellow cherry tomato grandparent or different shapes, different sizes. So now all these hidden traits that were actually inside these tomatoes that weren't expressed are going to come out in that F2 and F3 generation. So that's when it gets exciting. So I kind of, uh, my little um, thing basically I took and I had a football and a basket or a football and a tennis ball and they crossed and lo and behold a basketball appeared and you're like man the world can't be without a basketball so you save the seeds from the basketball try to grow i was lucky i grow 20 50 plants of this to see what it's going to do 
Okay, there's a couple of basketballs in there. Pick the best one, okay, you take the seeds. The next year, grow 50 plants, maybe between 10 and 20 of them are now basketballs. Now is when you call your chef friend, you're like, dude, I got like hundreds of tomatoes to taste. Come over and tell me which one's a holy grail. We go through and evaluate them for production, uh, disease resistance, and then most importantly, flavor. You know, really judges. So we... Whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> It's happened before. Um, so that's how, and then, then eventually it takes about five to seven generations to eventually get it back to an open pollinated form, which is what heirlooms are known as an open pollinated form. They're no longer a hybrid. Just as a quick thing too, a lot of people, well, hybrids aren't bad, right? Well, you know, there's always a hidden evil. Hybrids aren't bad. They took two pollen from two tomatoes, crossed it, whatever. But just to let you know, it's mostly young teenage girls in a foreign country that do these commercial crosses. It's intensely labor. There are none of them done in the US. Okay, you have kids crawling through a field every day with tweezers and scissors pollinating your tomato seeds for you. <laughs>